With the announcement of Comixology Originals, it's time to talk about the elephant men in the room and the future of comics in 2018. I'm Stan, and this is Detail Comics. What's up, everybody? This is going to be a weekly one-shot where I'm talking about the future of comics, specifically comicsology, as well as a lot of different deals that have been going down inside the comic industry. Make sure you subscribe to get more content like this. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the announcement of Comixology Originals. So Amazon, which is owner of Comixology, has decided to start partnering with creators to bring a lot of different comic books only to Comixology as a platform. So instead of publishing through someplace like Image or other independent presses, they're just going to be producing their own digital content that's only available digitally, as well as bringing it to print on demand. So if there's a book that you like or a trade paperback that you like, an exclusively digital comic book that you actually want to own a trade paperback of, you'd be able to use Amazon's print-on-demand service in order to create your own specific copy of that versus having to go to your local comic book shop or order it online. So if we're talking about the first introductions to the Comixology Originals platform, we've got Savage Games, which is a story of some genetically hybridized monsters and an island that's inhabited by all these kind of different things. There's a, a bunch of stuff that's going on with that one. You've got Super Freaks, which is written by Elsa Chartier, who did the art for The Unstoppable Wasp. We also have Richard Starkings bringing two books, Ask for Mercy, which seems to be some sort of demonic or kind of like devilish tale. And then we also have Elephant Men 2261, The Death of Shorty, which is a short story based off of his Elephant Men series, which has been running for years at this point in time. So with those four books, as well as the announcement of up to 14 other creators that are gonna be joining Comixology Originals, that's most likely gonna happen at San Diego Comic-Con, you've got a potential platform that's going to be able to create exclusive content that draws people specifically to Comixology. And that just kind of goes in line with a lot of other acquisitions that have been happening. Of course, we know that DC was purchased by Warner Brothers back in like the 80s, but then we also have the purchase of Marvel by Disney in 2011, I believe, and then there was the recent acquisition of Valiant Comics by DMG Entertainment. So there's a heavy investment by a lot of these media companies that are going to be purchasing comic book properties or comic book companies so that that way they can have the creation rights for these things. But that's what makes the Comixology Originals platform a little bit more unique. The focus is primarily going to be on the creation of quality stories and content for Comixology subscribers under the Comixology Unlimited banner, as well as other things. So this is going to give creators a different avenue to release their independent comics. Instead of having to pitch to somebody like Action Lab, Antarctic Press, uh, Image Comics, or any of the other independent comic publishing companies, they're going to go right to Comixology and be able to create that content, get it out in front of people, and then possibly reap the revenues from either the print-on-demand service or just digital subscriptions. So it's a really interesting model that's going to be changing the landscape for comics in the near future. I'm not sure how successful it's going to be, but as more people adopt the primary devices of their phone, their tablet, and their computer as a way to kind of consume this content, it becomes a lot more interesting. The comic book industry as a whole was about a $1.1 billion industry as far as publishing is concerned, and about 10 to 15 percent of that was through digital comic book sales. So it's a small piece of the pie for them to be taking over, but you can see that market share increasing over time and the investment by Amazon into Comixology and creating original content specific for the platform makes it a lot easier for casual comic book consumers or people that are already a member of Amazon Prime or Amazon Prime Reading or something along those lines. It makes it easier for them to consume that kind of content and it's a proving ground for potential media development projects in the future. We already have situations where Miller World was purchased by Netflix, and that means they have the entire back catalog of Mark Miller's creations in order to pull from. He's already successfully adapted Kick-Ass to the screen, as well as Wanted. Uh, you've got Kingsman Secret Service, which actually has produced two films, and then there's a lot of other ones in development. I believe more than half a dozen at this point in time that are based on previous works of Mark Miller's. You have Skybound Entertainment, which is run by Robert Kirkman, which of course is the result of The Walking Dead, which has got not only a television deal, which is going going on into its ninth series, but you also have Fear the Walking Dead that's come from that, The Walking Dead, The Telltale Game, there's a lot of other different properties, and Skybound is helping other creators like Joshua Williamson's Birthright get made into a movie, as well as Invincible the film. There's a lot of different stuff that's coming from that. So if we're talking about what Comixology Originals means, is this an avenue for creators to kind of bring forth their best creations? Is it a way for them to kind of become a spotlight member of the comic book community without necessarily having to go through other individual publishers and get something made in actual print? Or is this a way for Amazon to create a mining operation, bringing younger creators, grabbing their ideas, and allowing them to be proved out through comic book sales digitally before turning them into other Amazon original creations? 
Netflix and Amazon have already been nominated for not only Emmys, but Academy Awards for various projects that they've produced online through their various services. These are the things that we have to consider when we're talking about the future of comic books and exactly what's going to happen, but I want to know what you guys think. Are you a really regular consumer of content on Comixology already? Is something along these lines, or possibly a new book that's going to be announced at San Diego Comic-Con, going to bring you into the Comixology fold? I've already made my subscription so that, that way I can check out the content and give you guys an idea of exactly what it's all about, but I want to know what you guys think and where you stand on the future. So hit me up in the comments down below and we can start that conversation. As always, if you like what you see, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to get more news, reviews, and commentary on comic books, comic book movies, comic book TV shows and games, and anything and everything inside the world of comics.